All right, this is a review for the the Joying uh, JYUL 135N2. Uh, it's a double DIN Android 5.1.1 unit. It's their newest one with a 2 gig of RAM and 32 gig ROM with an Intel uh, four core CPU. Sort of a replacement for their previous uh, 135 model. Also, um, I know a lot of people have complained that. These joining units don't fit in uh, U.S. spec cars. Uh, this is in a, a 2013 FRS. You'll notice the bezel is uh, completely in. I was able to accomplish this by basically buying two different dash trim kits and modifying both of them. Uh, one is specific for this car. That was the one that had the brackets for mounting. The reason that I had to do that was to move the unit more in the fore direction, like towards the front of the car. Basically, the the problem with the unit is that if you look at the, this is a Pioneer unit. If you look at the plastic part around the metal, notice that it is exactly flush with the metal. Um, on the joining units, the uh, the metal housing is the exact right shape. Problem comes in where the all the the plastic part around it, without any trim kit at all, just the plastic uh, face of the unit uh, sticks out about one or two millimeters, and that's enough to make it not fit even with no trim kit in the uh, in a stock location. Uh, so I was able to basically shift it back a little bit that let it fit and as you can see it doesn't really look that much different than you know you would normally expect so anyway that's enough talking about the unit let's go ahead and turn it on one thing you'll notice is that it started uh, right up um, it automatically launches ways let me turn this down also, notice how quickly it uh, turned down the volume, or up, down. The previous unit had a huge delay. This one does not suffer that problem at all. Another point about how quick it started up, when I first installed this, I thought there was a problem and then it didn't actually shut off. However, the way this one works is it puts it into low power mode, kind of like how a, uh, a Kindle Fire might do, or an iPad. Uh, basically it just essentially turns it off but it puts it in a suspended state um, so Waze is running it's got you know your full Android it's pretty responsive I don't have a lot of apps that I have up here I haven't installed a bunch of things but uh, the main reason I got this was to be able to run Pandora and Waze so you see Pandora starting up, switching the audio. Uh, all right, we can go back to nav. You have the the same buttons on the side, and like other reviews of the older model, uh, home, back, navigation, and source. Um, <clears throat> since I haven't moved yet, uh, Waze hasn't uh, changed to its other thing, but it's it's on. I can enter a you know location or whatever. Uh, it's pretty responsive. Um, let me turn this down a little bit. It just really works well. You can see what processes are running. Uh, it's settings up. Um, you know, you can close them just like any other, uh, you know, anything else. Here are some of the apps it comes with. Like, there, it comes with a navigation app. Uh, it's nice that it comes with one, but I didn't really use that. Um, I'm using a, uh, like a Verizon Jetpack uh, mobile hotspot. Um, the model number of that one I'm using is AC791L. <clears throat> that one has a pretty long battery life in uh, standby mode, so it works great for use in a car. You could also pair this to a phone. 
Um, just real quick, this is more a test of Verizon rather than it is of the unit, but uh, it's got the full uh, full Google Play Store. Yeah, so you can search, you know, add whatever you want to it. Um, I do not have the DVR that works with this unit or their OBD2 uh, unit that works with this one. This is pretty finicky as far as what OBD2 uh, devices it uses. For example, you can't use a PLX Kiwi, uh, it just doesn't recognize it. Also, from here, you can obviously choose whatever app you want to go into. So there's Ways again. That has a rear view camera which dims the audio. Um, you can have it set to turn the audio off when you go into reverse or dim it or do nothing. I have it you know, just, I guess, lowering the volume of the audio. It looks like over here. It's set up if you have some kind of vehicle sensors. I haven't looked much more into it. I don't have any vehicle sensors on this car, so there's nothing to put into that. Uh, it does get uh, the radio, which I have not programmed any stations because I actually don't really listen to the radio much. So here's, uh, <clears throat> I guess, big 105.9. Let me go ahead and set that one. And you just set it by holding the, the button like you would in any other radio. Some other settings down there. It doesn't have an HD radio tuner. I don't know if you could add one via USB or something. Again, volume works pretty well. Uh, when you turn the car back on, it will put the volume to... Uh, it won't just, you know, if you're blasting your music, it won't completely destroy your ears once you turn the car back on and you forgot to turn the radio down when you left. It'll put it back up to a, a reasonable volume. Um, that is pretty much it. There is more stuff that this unit does. Um, there are other reviews out there of it. I just wanted to show that it is possible to get it to fit uh, in a regular two den slot. It's not just simple. You just buy some products and install them. You have to do a little bit of work. Like I had to sand uh, these side pieces down a little bit. I had to basically mangle both uh, kits in order to get them to work together. Oh, one other thing. There are these two uh, micro SD slots. Um, the one on the left, I believe, is what they, what's considered the GPS one. That's if you're using a GPS uh, app that requires map data. That's where you would put it in. And they have another micro SD slot for your music. Um, you can also choose to have the DVR record to one or the other. So that way, if you're wanting to just kind of always have the DVR on in a loop, it would just go to one of the micro SDs. I think I have a 32 or 64 gig in one of them and it reads it no problem. Uh, I believe it'll read the larger ones as well. Um, I just don't have one in there right now so I can't comment on it. Comes with this Torque app but like I said I don't have the OBD2 uh, unit that uh, works with this head unit. Oh, one other deal. In here you can set if you want like the keypad on, that's where it, or the keypad tone, that's where it beeps every time you touch the screen. That's all right for feedback when you very first turn it on, but I quickly turn it off because it gets really annoying. Uh, then you have some other settings in here. This is, I'm not sure what any key boot does, um, but I left it on. Uh, the auto navy, I have, the, have that on because I always want Waze just to start whenever it starts. I believe that's what it, uh, what it does. You can have the on-screen display time either on or off. Uh, I mean, the car has a clock also, but you know, whatever. It doesn't really uh, consume too much screen real estate, and this won't, the, the top area doesn't get cluttered with a bunch of, it doesn't show you all the icons of the apps that are running anyway, so uh, it doesn't hurt anything. 
So here's the revert. Uh, they call it revered mute, <laughs> which that would be if you go into reverse to mute it uh, instead of uh, lowering the volume. Uh, and then default volume switch. The GPS mix, that is for uh, if you want to have your music and the GPS playing audio at the same time. And then the mix sound scale will basically, whenever the GPS is talking, it lowers the audio, or lowers whatever's playing a little bit, so it's the GPS is a little easier to hear. The same thing with the uh, reversing sound reduction that I was mentioning before, and that default boot volume. That'll make it so the volume isn't going to be at full max or whatever you were listening to when you turn the uh, turn the car off. Here you're able to set what your your navigation app is. Uh, in my case, I'm using Waze. It's the main reason I installed the unit. There's a home screen application selection, but there's only one option. So uh, that's what it is. So <laughs> there is this uh, developer settings, which requires a password. I haven't really tried looking at seeing if I could find that online, but I'm sure you can. Uh, that just shows the GPS data. Um, and that's it for those. Uh, that was the uh, car media settings. And uh, well, that's pretty much it for the, the Joying Double Din JYUL 135 N2 try to post links to the two dash kits that I used to get this to fit. One was the Scotia dash kit for the 2013 Cyan FRS, and the other one was the standard Metra Toyota Double Din dash kit that comes with uh, these little side pieces. Um, well, thanks for watching. Hopefully this was uh, informative.